Shalom Chabrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, the Noon Institute of Biblical Research. And uh, I guess as you guys can see in behind me here, we do have a completely different uh, backdrop. And we're working still on some other things here to try to th make things a little bit more professional. Uh, in fact, our news bro broadcast will in the future also have a, you know, will be like it's always been. It'll be with the uh, either the blue or some other color backdrop there and our screen will also come down to where you can actually see things that are going on right now though this is only part of our library and uh we decided to move part of that here as you can see uh for those of you that may not know what's what uh, this is the mishnah right here uh, we have all sorts of biblical references a lot of these are dead sea scroll references here uh, multiple bibles uh, bible references uh, resources hebrew sources uh, all kinds of things like that. Uh, we also have over here a Ruch Shulchan. Uh, this one here with the Star of David, this is the New Israel Bible. And uh, this is the one that Yanis talked about a lot. Uh, I don't recommend ever getting it because they have the Talmud quotes inside of it. That's your New World Order Bible, by the way. Uh, this is uh, the Sansino Talmud, which, by the way, it's kind of interesting. Most people that ever order a, what they call a Babylonian Talmud, you get something that looks kind of like that right there, right? And you think, wow, I've got the Talmud. And you start reading this and you're like, wow, now I know what's in the Talmud. No, no. That's the Talmud. That's the Talmud. Uh, you combine all that together. And uh, now on the Mishnah, I have both Hebrew English uh, on the Sensino. I, I have access to the Hebrew, but I don't have everything there. So it's just tons and tons of volumes of information uh, and books, resources, uh, just never any end. Anyway, that'll just kind of give you a little background there, just so you can see a little bit of the things that we work with here. Uh, and I don't know how much of that y'all could see. Actually, I realize there's a lot of things you don't see, but that's okay. Uh, anyway, it's just part of our resources here and because we are Danoon Institute of Biblical Research and that's what we do a lot of research on things. Anyway, I've got a phone call coming in soon so I'm going to try to get going through this really quick. May have to pause during this video there for this phone call I've got a, uh, that, that I've got coming in and then continue on but kind of remind you of the old days doesn't it when we used to have our bookcases in the background there. Um, I'm going to be going into this message here, and part of this was inspired by uh, an email I'd gotten. Uh, a brother had wrote me an email, and he was talking about the leaven, where Jesus speaks about the woman that put a little bit of leaven in the lump, and uh, but never uh, Yeshua never explains about that parable. And as soon as I started reading his message, I knew exactly where he was going with, and. Uh, or at least I thought I knew. Uh, he actually thought maybe that was because uh, Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is likened to a woman who added a little bit of leaven to the bread. I'm just paraphrasing that. Uh, and then the entire lump become leavened. And he was looking at that. Uh, his thought was is that this was how the giants got across the ark uh, of Noah's ark. It was a parable about that. I think myself it's much deeper than that. And it goes much further back. Uh, but I still think the premise of his uh, thought was correct uh, as far as um, that leaven being added there. But see where the problem is, though, is when it talks about the kingdom of heaven is like a, the woman that had a little bit of leaven. And that's where it's kind of hard to balance that out. What was Yeshua really speaking about? Um, I could take you on a journey with that, but that is a very deep journey, and uh, I think it might be best we don't go down that journey as of right now. But it was interesting because I was already looking at another scripture here in the book of Revelation, uh, Revelation chapter 18, uh, and it says here, verse 2, and he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great has fallen, has fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth or waxed rich through the abundances, abundance of her delicacies. 
Now, I know there's all kinds of interpretations about the scripture here. Uh, you know, who is Babylon, etc. And a lot of people think it's America, some think it's Israel, some think it's the Catholic Church. I, for many, many years, believed it was the Catholic Church, but it wasn't until I really began to understand the prophecies that were written in the book of Ezra that Babylon refers to Israel, where Israel fell, when the sin actually came in. And we'd have to understand that a little bit more in the respect of like when God said to Abraham, the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. Uh, the iniquity of the Amorites would be when the Amorites would actually do like the Canaanite, the Perzite, and the Hittite. They would bring in these giants uh, through their sexual sins that Moses had warned the children of Israel about. And, uh, and of course, they, the, uh, the, the full fulfillment of their iniquity uh, being full was in Babylon when the remnants of the Amorites ended up marrying in among the, amongst the daughters of, uh, of the Jewish people at that time. And uh, just to kind of remind you of that, I do want to take you over to the book of Ezra uh, because no matter how many times I teach on these things, if we don't really go back and reestablish that foundation, people are, will tend to forget uh, these things here. So Ezra 9, verses 1 and 2 says, Now when these things were done, the princes drew near unto me, saying, The people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the peoples of the lands. Lands being plural. Haarotz. Haarotz. Okay. Uh, doing according to their abominations. Even the Canaanites, the Hittites, Perzites, Jebusites, Ammonites, Moabites, Egyptians, and Amorites. What were their abominations? Well, we go back into the biblical account. We can see in Leviticus, they were passing their children through the fire to Molech. Uh, literally, they were birthing these children. They, they had brought in, as it says about Anak, uh, that he was one of the Nephilim. He was a, literally, his father was a, a Nephilim, one of the fallen angels, and his sons were Nephilim. Uh, remember Joshua, when he came into the land, that was the one thing that Joshua had noted was that uh, the, all the people there were giants. They had all done these very sinister abominations in the sight of God and had brought back the very fallen angels as it was before the fall. Uh, and Or I should say before, not so much before the fall, but before what we've seen happen over in um, uh, the times before the flood when the fallen angels came down. Uh, that has a lot to do with the leaven, by the way, uh, that's in the lump there. Uh, but you'd have to go back even before that to really understand that. Uh, and I think it's even before anything anybody would really understand in the first place. For they have, for taken, for they have taken of their daughters of themselves and for their sons, so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the peoples of the lands, yea, the hand of the princes and rulers have been first in this faithlessness. So it was the priests and the Levites and the leaders that had literally, if you want to even take the parable of Jesus just right here, they had added a little bit of leaven to the lump. See? Now, if we look at that parable that the brother shared with me, let me take you to that. I think I have it up here on the screen somewhere, maybe on the Hebrew Matthew. Let me just see. Uh, yeah, here we go, right here. In the Hebrew Matthew chapter 13, he spoke to them another, another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like, like, an, like leaven, which a woman puts into three measures of flour, and it leavens all of it. All right? Now, that's in the Hebrew Matthew. If you look at this in, the, um, in our regular King James Matthew, which that's around verse 34, I believe it is. I'll just scroll down to that. He says here, Another parable spake he unto them, The kingdom of heaven is like unto, like unto, he, uh, unto leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal. To the whole was leavened. And notice she hid it. That's what happened during the times even with Ezra when the, you know, the, the, the priests and the Levites, they were sleeping with these women and they brought forth children by them. It was an act that they tried to hide. 
And that's why you can look at that parable and see what he's talking about, but he's actually saying the kingdom of heaven is likened unto leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal. Now there, there's something different, all right? If she hides in three measures of meal, and this is supposed to be like the kingdom of heaven, what kind of parable is Yeshua speaking about? Well, I believe this is where corruption comes in. This is how we end up with the fall in the first place. All right, so just think about it from that, that point, and it make, make, might make more sense. All these things, uh, things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable spoke he not unto them. See, and he tells, he tells his apostles later, it was because it was given to them to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, right? All right, so I just want to kind of throw that out there to you. But I, I came into this scripture here, though, uh, in Revelation, and Revelation 18, verse 2, and I realize that this has a lot to do as well as with what happened in the book of Ezra, chapter 9. Because notice what he says. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils. The very fact that he says, is fallen, is fallen, should be a key, it should be a clue to us to realize nafal. The Hebrew word for fallen, nephal. If you were saying this in Hebrew, I would imagine you'd say something like, you know, uh, Babylon, who uh, nephal, nephal, and has become the habitation of devils. It's almost as if we look at this as a prophecy of the future when John is saying this, but he clearly identifies the location of the fall, which is Babylon, and they have become a habitation of devils. After these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having a great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit and cage of unclean burn, for, uh, bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornications with her, and the merchants of the earth have waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. I kind of find it interesting because they refer to Donald Trump as the king as well. Uh, we're living in a day where Israel is referring to a lot of these world leaders as kings. But at any rate there, uh, what really had me stumped though was besides the fact that it was a habitation of devils, John writes here in the hold of every foul or evil spirit in the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. And that's what threw me at first. Why bird? And then I realized, if you look at the book of Matthew, and we look at uh, the, uh, the, the, the parable of the sower, and, um, and we're going to briefly touch on the other one. He says, here therefore the parable, uh, excuse me, uh, it starts right in verse 10, and this is Matthew 13, 10. And the disciples came and said to him, Why speakest thou unto them parables? He answered to them and said to them, Because it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. If you drop down to verse 13 and 14, he said, Therefore I speak to them in parables, because they seeing, see not, and hearing, they hear not. Neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of, of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing you shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see, but and shall not perceive. All right, now actually I'm trying to get to a different, let's see. Um, I was actually looking at the one, I didn't go far enough up, verse 3 and 4. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow, and when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside. And the fowls, or the birds, came and devoured them up. All right, that very parable right there, which we know he talks about, you know, some of the seed falls in the stony places, some amongst the thorns, and some in good ground, right? But if you look at just verse 4, and when he sowed some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up, all right? And then when he interprets that particular parable right there, which is down in verse 19, 
he says what the interpretation is. He says, when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. All right. In the book of Mark, and he writes the same parable, and he says, uh, And it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it, uh, devoured it up, which is verse 4 of chapter 4. But when he interprets it, he doesn't say the wicked one. He flat out says it was Satan. And these are they which by the wayside... Uh, uh, where the word is sown, but when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. Now, the only reason I bring this up is so that we can see, and you can also find references in the Old Testament, how that Jesus, Yeshua, is using uh, the analogy of birds to also represent evil. Or evil spirits, uh, devils. Uh, I think the book of Luke calls it the devil. Uh, Mark calls it Satan, and Matthew says the evil one, right? And he's represented as an evil bird. So that when we look back at Revelation 18:4, and we see that Babylon is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird or devil, you might say. I can't help but believe that this is, even if we look at it as a prophecy, but let's say it's something that John is writing about that is something that's already passed or was happening in the times uh, of Yeshua to start with. They are showing you where the fall took place. It was in Babylon. And the fallen is fallen are the Nephilim, the fallen angels, and they have made Babylon the very place where they once again inhabited. They created cages for these evil spirits to dwell within. Uh, now, there's no doubt that when we look at Revelation, we can see even in chapter 17, when he talks about mystery Babylon, that's why I bring this out as well. If we go to Revelation 17, start, let's just start with verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto you the judgment of the great whore that sits upon many waters. Of course, we know waters represents peoples, multitudes of peoples, right? So they're everywhere with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. You know, it's interesting. She's drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus, and yet she is mystery Babylon, which tells us if it's a mystery, if Babylon is a mystery, it can't be the Babylonian kingdom like we would think of with Cyrus, Darius, uh, Artaxerxes, any of the kings of that era. This is dealing about a mystery that happens in Babylon. Now, Ezra did reveal what mystery took place in there, and there was a mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, and that was the fact that they were playing harlotry, the Levites were, and that was happening right there in Babylon. This is where this was all corrupted. 
And I can't help but wonder, even if we're looking at this as a future prophecy, I can't help but wonder when I look over here, though, in Revelation 18, and it talks about Babylon is fallen as fallen. Could this be a reference to the fallen angels? Because Babylon, this is the place where they become the habitation of devils. Their bodies become that habitation of devils. And every foul spirit and cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Yeah, you know, something to think about, guys. I, I just wanted to share some of this with you. I know it's uh, a little different than what we normally would discuss. Some, well, not really different. I, I got to share something with you, though, just so we can kind of follow where this is coming from. In the Dead Sea Scrolls, there is a one of the, in Cave 1, it's called Scroll uh, 1Q21, uh, Moses is actually speaking here and I've read this to you guys before but just as a reminder because it tells you the way the path Israel would go the heads of the family let's see interpret for the heads of the families for the Levites and for the priest notice who he, he's speaking to and decree decree to the sons of Israel the words of the law which I command you on Mount Sinai to decree to them proclaim in their ears everything accurately for I will require it from them take the heavens and the earth a witness against them for they will not love what I have I have commanded them they and their sons all the days of, of uh, days they live upon the earth however I will announce that they will desert me and choose the sins of the peoples their abominations and their disrep dis disre disreputable acts and will serve idols and will become a trap and a snare and they will violate violate all the holy assemblies the sabbath of the covenant interesting isn't it you know i read to you the other day where levi also said about his own children their descendants would also fall i'm stephen benoon you're watching israeli news live the noon institute of biblical research uh, we're doing a very interesting study right now on the things that are going on. Uh, and I'm going to be bringing some of that out with you. So uh, hopefully tomorrow we'll be able to do so. God bless you and thank you for watching. Erev Tov.